Hi everyone, in this video I'm just going to show you the basics of word processing using Microsoft Word 2013 on a Windows 7 desktop computer. So first I need to find Word 2013. There's a couple of ways I can do that. Um, usually we start down in the start menu here and it's not in this um, quick uh, access panel here. So I'm going to go to all programs and there's usually a huge list of stuff here and I can use my mouse to scroll through with the wheel or I can grab this and pull it up and down. Um, there's Microsoft Office 2013 right here. I just click that once and it opens the folder and there's Word right there. So I can click that and that'll open. Another quicker way of doing it is just to go to your start menu and in the search area just start typing Word and there it is. It's the first one that appears. So I'm just going to open this Okay, so when Word loads up, you'll have a bunch of options as far as what uh, templates you want to use. Um, and these are usually for different themes. So you can see there's like pictures involved in some, there's different fonts, and there's like event planners and flyers and all sorts of stuff. Usually what I do is I just do a blank document. That way I have more control over what it looks like. So I'll just double click on that and I'm right into editing my document. So when you first get into your document, um, what you'll see is this top bar here. And all of these different tabs allow you to do different things. If you click through them, uh, you'll see different options. So for home, you have your basics of all the text formatting and changing alignment and all the stuff that we'll cover in this lesson. Uh, more advanced things are the ability to insert tables and pictures and Wikipedia entries and video stuff. Um, design is you can change the theme, sort of related to our uh, template choosing. Page layout is uh, text line spacing and all sorts of stuff. References if you're writing a research paper. Uh, mailings is if you're writing a bunch of letters and you want to substitute in names. Uh, review is when you want to uh, make comments on a document if you're working on a document with other people uh, and view is just different ways of looking at it so if you're writing a document for a web page something like that then this shows you what it will look like and then developer you probably don't need to worry about that it's all about programming and adding things to um, Microsoft Word as far as uh, plugins and things like that so let's go back to home and I'm just gonna start typing and we'll go through all of the different options that we have when we're typing so I'm just gonna start and I'll say font Oop, that said front. Font, there we go. So the, the default font when we start typing in this version of Windows is uh, Calibri. Yours might be different depending on what preferences you set up at the beginning. But I don't like Calibri, so I'm going to change that. And anytime you want to change uh, the attributes or the characteristics of some text that you've written, all you need to do is click down your mouse and drag to select it. So now that it's selected, I can do that. And you'll notice something really popped up there when I selected. So let me do that again. As soon as you select text, all the options for it pop up. So these options look very similar to these options here. In fact, they're exactly the same. So I don't like this font, so I'm going to change this to something more universal, and I'll go to... there's Arial. There we go. So I just changed that font to Arial. It doesn't look that much different, but it, I did change the... So now we're in Arial. I'm going to go to the next line by hitting Enter, and then I'm just going to do uh, Text Size same thing. I can highlight that. Here I can change it to a, uh, 20 or something if I want here, or I can do it up here. You can do it in multiple places. So as you scroll through you can change the text size and it, it auto updates. I'm just going to leave that as 20. So that's a good example. But what you'll notice is when I hit return I'm still at 20. So basically all the changes that I make kind of add on. So I'm going to type out here um, alignment. I'm going to go um, like center but I don't want this to be uh, size 20 anymore so I'm going to change that back so I'll highlight that and I'll put that back to 11 so now they're the same size so in order to change my alignment I would select my text and using these icons here I can choose which alignment I want and so let's see here um, on the left it looks like control L on my keyboard will make that happen or I can just click the button I'm going to do uh, center so when you'll notice here, uh, when I start typing, center the text here, it's hugging the center of my document. It's not hugging the left like normal, it's hugging the center. So I'm going to do the same thing with uh, align right. So I'll just say align, and I will select that, and then I'll move up here. 
and it looks like I can use Control R as a shortcut as well on my keyboard. So if I do Control R or if I click this button, it does exactly the same thing. So I'm going to align there. And then when I type more, you can notice that it's actually hugging the right hand side and shooting my text kind of off to the left. So I'll go align right on this document. So that's how alignment works. And again, when I go to the next line, it'll retain that attribute. So I want to go back and I want to change that to left. So now that I'm normal again. Okay, what else we need to do? Um, I'm going to do some bold text. So I'm going to bold this. And same up here, I can do B. And there are keyboard shortcuts to all of these, and you can feel free to um, practice with those. Um, I'm going to go italic. And I'll select that. I don't want this text to be bold, I just want it to be italic. So you'll notice that this is highlighted, so I'm just going to check that and it'll make it not bold anymore, but I do want it to be italic. So I'll go to the next line and again, I'll call this one underline. I don't want this one italic, so I'll uncheck that and go into underline there. So another useful thing that your instructor might want you to do is to have specific line spacing for a report or something you're writing, working on. So to do that, all you need to do is highlight all of the text that you want to conform to that, and there's this option here, line and paragraph spacing. So I can do one, or I can do three, or two, or however I want to do that. You'll notice there is spacing here, and under page layout, you'll notice that before each line or after each line you can set um, how big the space is. So if I really wanted it to hug close I would do uh, zero points and then I might come back to here and change it to one and a half times spacing. That's, that's quite common. So the last thing I'm going to show you is actually how to copy and paste things. So if I want to write, I'm going to fix all my formatting here on take that underline off and I'll just say copy and I'll just say paste. So if I want to copy this text all I need to do is highlight it and up in the top corner here there's a copy button and what we need to do after we copy it is just unhighlight the thing that we have selected and then we can just paste paste, 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 whatever we want to do. Um, there's a really quick shortcut to do this though that most people use. Instead of using these buttons up here, they will select the text and on the keyboard you just say control C for copy. You unselect what you've selected and then go control V, control V, control V, control V, control V. And that's a really simple way. So again, that's control C for copy and control V is in Victor for paste. Um, another thing you can do is if I want to move something, I've got this paste here, I can cut it. And the shortcut, let's see, for cut is Control X. So I'll just hit this button, cut. So that's a temporary delete. So then what I can do is I can put it where I want to put it. And a lot of times you'll need to kind of reshuffle the line. So I made an enter, or I hit enter here, and I made space. So now I can paste that, and now that paste font or paste text will go in there. So there's a bunch of stuff you can do. You, the thing to remember just to be patient with yourself when you're copying and pasting and moving things around because sometimes the spacing can change and you might m join words together or accidentally uh, paste something inside a word and, and it gets a bit confusing. So just be patient with that and you'll be fine. The last thing that I wanted to show you is actually how to change the orientation of the paper. So anytime you're working on a word processing document, uh, you do have the representation of a piece of paper that you're going to print because that's the whole point of word processing. Um, so sometimes you might need to rotate that piece of paper and have it print sideways like you're holding it. Um, so the the upwards way is called portrait and the sideways way is called landscape. And to change that you just go into page layout and orientation. So when I change this you'll notice that the width will get wider. If I go landscape, there we go. So you'll notice that uh, these alignments have actually adjusted themselves. They haven't kind of stayed in the same place. They've actually adjusted themselves based on the width of the document. So when I change that back to portrait, the um, space that we have on the left and right stays the same, but the text moves to adjust.
Okay, so those are the basics of using Microsoft Word. Um, the last thing that you want to do is when you're working on a document like this, you need to save it. So there's a save button at the top here, and you can just click that one and then it gives you some options as to where you want to save it and you have a couple of options if you have your OneDrive account set up you can click that one and if you're logged into the computer it should allow you to save that or you can just save it to your U Drive by hitting browse and then using the left hand navigation here to go to your U Drive and your documents folder right there so once you get it in here it's pretty easy to upload it to OneDrive directly Okay, so that's the basics of using word processing in uh, Microsoft Word 2013.